Hello everyone, uh, this is Yihui, and uh, today I'm going to talk about um, a project that I have been working for the past uh, half year, uh, which is called Bookdown, and it's an R package for uh, writing books uh, with R Markdown. So first I'd like to talk about um, some motivation behind this package. Actually, I, I wanted to to do this actually two years ago, but I, I managed to have time uh, to get some time earlier this year. So I started uh, this project um, uh, earlier this year, and there are some problems that I I I want to solve. And I have been a student in the major of st statistic, statistics for over ten years, and I I, I believe. Um, that there are some problems that we 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 should solve for books. The first one is that books should be uh, much e should have been much easier to write. Technically, uh, it's um, I mean normally people use like LaTeX or Word to write books, but these things are either not flexible or too complicated, and there are too many technical challenges. And today uh, I will. Um, show you how easy it can be to uh, write a book. And the second problem is that I, I believe uh, most of the books are uh, just way uh, too expensive and my ideal price for the books are just like ten dollars or twenty dollars. And you know typically uh, the books that you buy when you are a student, I mean the textbooks are typically like around like seventy dollars or one hundred or sometimes even two hundred dollars. That's just too expensive, and I believe we can cut some cost in the books. And the third problem is that the books, uh, especially the, the printed books, are never interactive, and the content are not rich. It's not rich enough. Uh, if uh, if you if you use book down, you will see that you can have uh, dynamic content in your books, and which makes it much uh, richer to read. And for example, you can embed interactive HTML widgets or even interactive shiny apps right in the book. And when you read the book, you can just uh, interact with these widgets or apps. So you can just imagine that when you read a book on uh, for example, linear regression. You can just fit a linear regression by yourself when, as you read the book. Or if you read a book on like machine learning, you can just tune the parameters in your models and see the output um, directly. So that that is just like a personalized book, just like personalized medicine. So you can be, you you can have your own version of book. So it's very interactive, and it's, uh, the content can be very rich. And the fourth problem is that typically books are very slow to iterate. And uh, so you, after you publish your first edition of the book, you often have to wait for uh, several years to uh, write the, the second edition. And I, I believe that's just way too slow, and it, it can be much quicker to iterate and I will show you how. And the last problem is that um, the books are often uh, written by like one person or uh, a limited number of authors and the the feedback that you get when you write the book is um, very limited as well. So typically you uh, your publisher will find some reviewers for you. It's like three anonymous reviewers, and you only get the feedback from them. I and I firmly believe that you can attract a much larger number of contributors to your book, and you can get much much more feedback on the book. And I will also show you how. So, so when you are thinking about writing a book. So you you may open your LaTeX editor or Word to write a book, and we want to buy a book. The book can be like three hundred dollars, which is too expensive. And when you are considering writing 
uh, another edition of the book, you, I guess you probably often look like this. You just simply give up because there are uh, many problems. For example, uh, and, and we, we need to solve these problems. We don't want these problems to happen over and over again. We need to end that. And for example, if you, if you are familiar with LaTeX, you should understand what I mean uh, in this uh, GIF. So if, if you work with LaTeX, and you know, LaTeX, sometimes LaTeX can be very fragile. Even, even if you change only a little bit in your document, your layout, you can totally screw up you know, your layout. Your figures and tables can float anywhere in the book, and it's just very uh, distractive when you, when you write the book. And how about Word? I know many people use Word, and Word is good if you write a few paragraphs, and sometimes maybe when you, after you write a, a few other paragraphs and you feel very good. But if you write a long document like a book or a very long report, eventually it will just blow up like, like this. So we don't want you to be in that situation. So what I would recommend is that you can uh, use Markdown. Markdown is a very simple language. I, I assume uh, most of uh, our attendees today are reasonably familiar with uh, Markdown. So basically, if you are able to write emails, you, you should be able to learn uh, Markdown. And I, I actually, I have a personal award, which is if you are not able to learn Markdown in the basics of Markdown in 10 minutes, I will just award you $10. So Markdown is very uh, simple to write. It's just uh, as simple as this. You just hop up, uh, hop on the car, and you're ready to go. And then we uh, actually, mark, because Markdown is so simple, it of course it has. Um, th th there are some features for writing books that are missing in Markdown. Actually, the original Markdown was designed for writing HTML content, and it, it was very simple. But we have uh, developed uh, a package called R Markdown, which added uh, two powerful uh, components to Markdown and makes, makes it uh, suitable for writing articles and books. And these two components are PenDoc and R. So first we added R to Markdown, which means we can uh, uh, mix R code with your Markdown text. So you can embed your computing right into your book. So when you write a book or uh, an article, you can just uh, embed R code chunks there and you click a button and the R code chunks will, be, will just be executed and you will, you will uh, get the output, and you don't have to run the code separately and copy and paste the results. So we added R, which means you can do uh, statistical computing, data analysis, data, data visualization in your document. So that's one uh, source of force in, in Markdown. And the other component is a PenDoc. And PenDoc is a very powerful tool for converting uh, documents and it can convert markdown documents to many other formats for example to html or to uh, latex pdf or to uh, ebooks and wor even word documents and presentations so it's it's another powerful tool so with r and pendoc markdown can be uh, as powerful as this so it has a lot of force so that's our markdown. And the story has not ended there. So now uh, we have book down. And uh, just one uh, sentence summary of book down. It's a tool. It's a very simple tool that uh, makes you look awesome because uh, when, you, when you write a book, you know, when you tell other people, oh, I, I wrote a book, and of course you look very awesome. So book down is just that simple tool behind you that makes you look awesome. So you can write a book with very simple tools. And uh, so 
I'm just going to show you some demos uh, using uh, down Before that, I, I want to briefly explain the basic structure of, of books. So when, when you write a book or a long report, you you often do not want to write everything in one single R Markdown document. Instead, you have multiple R Markdown document. And one R Markdown document is, oops, is just one RMD file. So you have multiple RMD files. Typically, each RMD file is a chapter. So you have multiple chapters, and Bookdown can convert these multiple chapters into a book. And the output format can be like PDF or HTML or EPUB. EPUB is a, a, a format for ebooks. And in Bookdown, I also uh, extended some uh, Markdown features, for example, uh, so as I said, the original Markdown was very simple, and Pandoc's Markdown is more powerful, but it still lacks some common features for, especially for academic uh, writing. For example, it doesn't currently it does not have the feature of uh, numbering your figures and tables or cross-reference your figures and tables. And I added uh, this feature in, in Bookdown, and I will show you examples later. You can also uh, embed interactive content, like videos or HTML widgets or Shiny applications in your book. So, and you may ask when the output is not HTML, for example, if it's PDF or EPUB, how can these HTML widgets or Shiny apps uh, work? And that's a, that will be a very good question. And the answer is that uh, if the output format is not HTML, uh, Bookdown will just automatically take screenshots of HTML widgets in Shiny apps and embed a static screenshot in your book. But um, if your reader wants to know more about these interactive uh, widgets, uh, they, they either go to the uh, HTML output of, of your book or go to the URL of the Shiny apps to, to interact with uh, this interactive content. And one, so that uh, you can have uh, different styles in the output as well. And uh, the, uh, the the style that I personally uh, uh, like very much is a style called Gitbook style, and some people might be familiar with this. So this style was actually borrowed from uh, another open source project called Gitbook. So you can know more about that from gitbook.com. And we borrowed the style from them, but we replaced the internal Markdown renderer with R Markdown. So they, so basically that means we are using Pandoc to render the book instead of uh, uh, their simple Markdown render. And the, the Gitbook style is also very uh, responsive in terms of that uh, when, you, when you read the book on like smaller devices like on your phone, uh, the theme, uh, the, the, the layout will just automatically adjust to the smaller devices. And uh, there are also different uh, themes, like uh, lighter themes or darker themes, and I will show you uh, these themes later. And also, you can uh, click a, an Edit button to edit the R Markdown source document. And there are other um, buttons on the toolbar. And uh, let me just uh, quickly show you the example. So there's a, so this exam, the source document for this example is actually on GitHub. It's under our studios account. It's called Bookdown Demo. So if you are interested in trying that out right now, you can just go to uh, this GitHub repository. So this is just a minimal uh, Bookdown Demo. So as I said, a book consists of multiple 
RMD files, like I have an index RMD that is the first uh, chapter or the home page of your book. And then you have like 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03 up to uh, 0, 06. And these are our markdown chapters. So you have these chapters. As, as this is only a minimal example, these chapters are just pretty much like one sentence. So you have multiple RMD files. And if you have installed a uh, book down, actually I uploaded book down to CRAN just last night. So you might be able to install book down from CRAN. If it's not in your CRAN mirror yet, you can just install from GitHub using uh, dev tools. So like, um, you can use install dev tools, install GitHub, R Studio, book down. So that's how you can install the package. Once it's installed, you, you will be able to compile these RMD files into a book. So there are uh, the minimal configuration is this. So in the index.rmd, you have uh, a site option, which is book down, book down site. And then the output option, which is book down, colon, colon, uh, git book. Git book is just one of the output formats in, in book down. So, so let's just uh, take a look at the Git book style first. So another thing I want to mention is that I'm using the preview version of R Studio now. So it's uh, 0.99.1251. So that's a preview version. If you don't know where to download the preview version, you can simply Google for like R Studio preview version. So the reason to use the preview version of R Studio is that with the R Studio preview version, you will see a build a build tab here, and there there is a menu here list uh, listing the possible output formats of your book. And the first one is Git book. So let's just uh, click this build book button to build these RMD files into the Git book format. So this is the Git book format that I just mentioned. And uh, let me just walk you through the layout of the Git book style. So the, the Git book output is essentially some HTML web pages. So each, each, uh, each chapter will be a single page by default. So you can navigate through the book by clicking the navigation button at the bottom. It is, the button is at the bottom because uh, my screen um, is very narrow right now. If, if your screen is wide enough, you can see the navigation button will be on the left and, uh, and right side. So you can navigate to the second chapter or the third chapter. So you can navigate through different pages and uh, so on the left, left side, you can see there's a table of contents showing the chapter titles. And of course, you can collapse the sidebar. So especially when your screen is too narrow, you may want to just hide the table of contents on the left. And you can search in the book. For example, you, you want, if you want to know more, if you want to search for tables, in the book, you can probably you can just type in that uh, search box, for example, tab, and you will see that your keyword will be highlighted on the page. So that's the search button, and here is the button for setting the themes and font size of the book. For example, you can make your the font bigger or smaller. You can choose. Uh, different font families, you can use serif or sans serif. You can set like white, the white theme, sepia theme, night theme. So different themes. And as I mentioned, there's uh, an edit button on the toolbar. 
let me uh, pop out the web page in my web browser. So here's uh, an edit button, and this edit button does not mean you edit the R Markdown source locally. It's this button is there for your potential uh, con contributors. So when your reader uh, clicks this button, it will take you to GitHub. As I said, this repository is on GitHub. When your reader clicks this button, it will take you to the R Markdown source document on GitHub. For example, it will be very helpful if your reader uh, finds like a typo in your in your book, and he or she can just fix that typo and uh, uh, commit that change on GitHub and send you a pull request. In case you are not familiar with pull requests, let me just show you an example of a pull request. So basically, a pull request is that you you can fork other people's GitHub repository to your own account and make some changes and then send the changes back to the original repository. So here is uh, the repository of the, the book R for Data Science by uh, Hadley and Garrett. And you can see many people have contributed to, to that book. And uh, the most, I guess the most common pull requests uh, is uh, the ones that fix uh, the fixed typos. And you can see many of the pull requests have been, have been merged. And let me show you how uh, the changes uh, look like. So basically when you read a book, if you find some typos, you can just click that edit button and make these changes and submit these changes back to the original repository. And when the author uh, sees your changes, he can just uh, uh, click uh, a button called a merge pull request to merge your changes back into the main repository. So this little edit button, I believe it will be very helpful if you put your book uh, uh, in a public place like we have a website called bookdown.org that allows you to host your uh, book online for free. And when other people read your book and find some problems or they want to make suggestions, they can just hit this edit button and it will take you to the R Markdown source and you can make the whatever changes you want and send the changes back to the authors. So that will be a, a very interesting way to provide feedback or help the authors uh, write their books. So that is what I, what I, what I meant uh, in the beginning. And the books are often written by a small, a small number of authors, but they should attract uh, attention from many, many other readers. And these readers can contribute to your book. And uh, so the last button on the left on the toolbar is a download button. So the, the Git, as I said, the Git book style is basically a series of HTML pages, and you can download the, the book in other formats, for example, PDF and EPUB. So let's go back to the uh, build tab again. So, so, so you can build this book using the Git book uh, format. You can also click a PDF book to build the same R Markdown documents into a PDF document. So basically, Bookdown will just uh, call the PDF book format in, and, com and LaTeX to compile the, these R Markdown files into a book like this. And see, this is a PDF book. We have a table of contents. We have different chapters. And we, we can have like floating figures and tables in the book. So that's the PDF output. And we also have the ebook, EPUB, ebook. E we can render the book to EPUB. 
And since I'm using Mac, it's it, it opened the ebook in iBooks. So still the same content, different output formats. And uh, another cool thing about these multiple output formats is that pretty much all the features will work in all the output formats. For example, when you have cross-references of like chapters or uh, figures and tables, all these cross-references will work in, in uh, EPUB and HTML and PDF. So you don't have to worry too much about your possible output format. So that's the PDF and the EPUB output. And finally, on the Gitbook toolbar on the right, there's a share button. So you can click these buttons to share the link of your book on your uh, social network media, like Facebook or Twitter. Mm. So that's the book done demo. And next, I'm going to sh just as uh, because this is an existing uh, demo, and people may may ask, what if I want to start from scratch? And I can also show you how you can just uh, uh, start from scratch to write a book. So basically, you can create a project from our studio uh, file. A new project, and you can start with a new directory, then an empty project. Let me create a project under the documents direct, uh, directory. Let's say it's let's name this uh, the book directory as a test book. So now this is an empty project, and I can put a number of R Markdown files in this project. Let's say the title of the book is an awesome book. So you create a new R Markdown document and you just save that as index.rmd in this project. And then in case you have forgotten the the two options that you need to set one is the output format let's use a uh, gitbook as the output format and let's another option is the site option that has to be book down book down site so you save this um, Because this is a new project, let me uh, let me let me restart this project so that our studio can recognize this project as a book. Let me open it again. So still the test book project, and if you open it again now. R Studio can recognize, okay, this is a book project. So it will show you a build tab, and now you can build this um, single document into a book, into the gatebook format. Oops. Um, you may say that it's uh, the, the chapter number is weird here because um, I should have used the top level uh, section header here, which means one single hash. Let's build the book again. Okay, so now we've got one chapter. So, so it's pretty simple to start a book, right? You just set these two options. And if you want to add more chapters, you can simply add other Chapters, so another R Markdown document. Let's save it as example chapter 2.rmd. And you don't 
you don't need this. So a chapter title is uh, should start from a one single hash. Um, let's use the chapter title, Hello World. World. Okay, let's just leave uh, two paragraphs here. Another chapter, let's build the book again. So we have two RMDs, so now we have two pages in the book. So that's how you can uh, start a simple book, just to uh, repeat. This, these are the two options that you need to set. <coughs> so that's a simple project. Let's go back to the Bookdown demo project again. Um, there are some details that I didn't mention, and I want to mention them here. So one thing that I mentioned earlier is that you are able to uh, label, uh, number, you are able to number your figures and tables. And the, the way to do that is that the code chunks, you know, it will have some uh, chunk labels. For example, I have a nice fig for this code chunk. And then if you are using book down, you will be able to uh, refer to this figure using the syntax backslash at ref in parentheses, then uh, the figure label, which is a fig colon followed by the chunk label. So that's how you can refer the uh, figures. And for tables, it's, it's the same. So see, you have this in the R Markdown source document, and you have the actual figure number in the output, and your figure is numbered here, figure 2.1. And you can, there are many other uh, features, and you can know more about these features from the Bookdown documentation, which you can find on bookdown.org. So this actually will be a printed book in the, in the future. And let me just uh, walk you through walk you through some uh, features that I think are very cool. So there's, there's a basic markdown syntax in chapter two, and I'm not going to repeat these uh, features. And one thing I want to mention is that you, you, you should be able to write um, math expressions in your book. So you can see some math equations there. So that's just the, the latex syntax. Basically, basically, you just write your math expressions in uh, uh, a pair of dollar signs. So talking about math, there is actually a feature in Bookdown, which is there is an add-in. So if you use Bookdown, there is an add-in called in Input LaTeX Math. You can get that from the RStudio toolbar. And this uh, add-in is to uh, help you write your math content in a visual way. So, you know, personally, I really hate reading a full screen of backslashes, especially when I type the math. You know, it's very, uh, it's very easy to screw up the math uh, content if you cannot see the, see the math expressions visually. So this, uh, uh, RStudio add-in can help you type the math expressions, and it also shows you the source, the LaTeX source of the math content. So when you are done, you can click done, and you will see the, uh, the math equation in your uh, R Markdown source document. And you just add a pair of uh, dollar signs, and there will be a math equation there. So that's the math. 
and uh, so you can you can embed R code chunks. You should be very familiar with that. You can number figures and tables and cross references, and you can also have some custom blocks. Like sometimes you may want to uh, write some notes or warnings or information in your book, so you can use these custom blocks. I'm not going to show you the detailed syntax, but I just want to let you. I just want to let you know that this is a possibility. And I mentioned HTML widgets and Shiny apps. So when the H, the output format is HTML, you will see you will see the HTML widgets live in your book. For example, I'm using uh, an HTML widget package called DT here, which can convert your uh, date frames and matrices into a table like this in your book. So basically, you can you can print a data frame in uh, like multiple pages. You can sort the table interactively. You can search in the table. So so there are many many other HTML widget packages that you can use, and this is just one of the examples. And uh, also for shiny apps. So when your reader uh, comes to your book, and they can just uh, they can just uh, interact with certain uh, content in your book. For example, I have I embedded a Shiny app here. The app has been published to shinyapps.io. So I just include that uh, URL of the app in the book. So now this this is actually live. So you can zoom in the map. You can like interact with the map. You can see uh, different tabs in this uh, shiny application. You can see the uh, date, the source data, or other tabs. So that's how you can interact with uh, shiny apps in the book. And when the output format is not HTML, this will just be a screenshot. Um, let's see. Let me talk a little bit about uh, custom customization. So it's actually these output formats are highly uh, customizable. Uh, I just want to show you one simple example. Let's say. So uh, let's let's just uh, use um, ATAC output as an example. Mm. I'm not sure how many people have used um, a LaTeX document class called uh, Coma Script, and that LaTeX document class is called SRC Book, and you may need to install a LaTeX package. But uh, anyway, I, I just want to show you how you can change the style of the output just using some simple options. Oops. Oh, sorry, it's not SRC, it's uh, SCR. Let's build this book to PDF again. So it will be using comma script to, to typeset your book. So you can see now the style is different. And just with a very simple change, you can totally change the style, the, the appearance of your book. And of course, there are a lot of other things that you can customize. For example, for the Gitbook uh, style, you can choose to uh, sh you can choose uh, which buttons to show there. You can you may like for example, you may disable this sharing button, and you can. Like hide this download button, or set the font size or font family in advance. So there are many many options for you to uh, customize the book. Okay, one last thing I want to mention about Bookdown is that uh, there's a function. Oops. 
called Publish Book. So after you have compiled your book, you can call this Publish Book function to publish your book to this website, bookdown.org. So currently it's free for you to host your book and just one simple call of this function and your book will show up here. So now we have uh, a number of books like the, the book for Bookdown and R for Data Science, Efficient R Programming, R Programming for Data Science and a lot of other books. And if you want to learn from other people's examples, you can uh, start from here. And there are uh, detailed instructions on how you can get started with uh, our studio and, um, and bookdown.org. Okay. Oh, another thing I, I should have emphasized is that um, since you have multiple chapters, and uh, just to save you some time um, compiling the book, the default behavior of clicking the knit button on the RStudio toolbar is only to preview the current chapter. So that means if you if you if you are in this chapter and you, you click the knit button, it will only compile this chapter. And uh, sometimes this can be confusing because if you only compile this chapter, other chapters may or may not work. They may, they may not have been compiled. So in that case, you you shouldn't navigate to other chapters because their content may not be correct. So this this knit button is only for preview purposes. So if you click this button, it only compiles this single chapter. So that can that may save you some time if you have some time consuming computation in other chapters. If you want to compile the whole book, always use the build button here. This will compile all the chapters. So just one thing to notice about the RStudio um, IDE. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have today. And uh, if you go back and try out the Book down package by yourself. You may run into certain issues that you don't understand, and don't just don't worry because the, this uh, I just released the first version of Book down to Cran yesterday, so I will not be surprised if it, if there are still um, if there are still some e uh, bugs or issues. So if you run into uh, these issues, please just file them to uh, the GitHub repository, or you can ask questions on Stack Overflow with the uh, tag Bookdown. And lastly, uh, if, you can't, if you can't remember all the things I talked about today, you can just go back and check out the website bookdown.org. And if you want to uh, uh, send me any feedback, you can uh, you can either let me know on Twitter or GitHub or find uh, uh, find my email on my homepage, or you can contact our studio. I want to thank you very much for um, being here. One person asked, how does one reorder the chapters? Okay, that's a very good question. All right, yeah, that's a very good question. So, so you have multiple. RMD files here, and the default order is just the natural order. That's why I named these uh, RMD files as 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03. If you want to uh, reorder these chapters, there is a configuration file called bookdown.yaml. So there you can have a, an option named uh, RMD files. Okay, yeah. It's this RMD files option. So you, you basically provide your own order of these RMD files using this RMD files option in the configuration file underscore bookdown.yaml. Uh, someone asked, can cross-references 
be forward references? And the answer is yes. The, it doesn't matter where your figures or tables are. You can simply use uh, the chunk label with the syntax that I mentioned, the backslash at ref. Yeah, you, can, you may generate a figure later in the chapter and uh, uh, refer to it earlier in the chapter. And the next one is, can you use Python with Bogdan? And the answer is also yes. So to use Python, instead of uh, back, three backticks uh, with R, you just use uh, three backticks Python. Uh, actually, this is, um, this is not uh, perfect at the moment, and we will improve this uh, in, the, in the future. So yeah, actually, uh, besides Python, you can use many, many other uh, types of languages, like C++, you can use RCMP, you can use C code, you can use Fortran, and also, if you are familiar with Bash, you can use Bash. So the, all these features um, come from Nitter, actually. All right, the next question is um, regarding math, how to align how to align and label equations in R Markdown or Bookdown. How to align and label equations. Um, I believe you can use the align environment. So even if this is uh, converted to non-LaTeX output, you the, the, the equations should be preserved, for example, for HTML output. You should still. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm typing the correct syntax here, but I think the align environment is in LaTeX, and you can still use that in for HTML output as well. And for uh, equation labels, you can just uh, use the syntax uh, backslash label. Um, actually, this does not work very well in terms of. Uh, the HTML output. If you labeled an equation, you can only uh, refer to it in the current chapter. You cannot refer to an equation in another chapter. Um, the next question is, um, is the syntax backslash at ref generic to R Markdown or only available in Bookdown? And the answer is, is only available in Bookdown. It's, uh, yeah. But uh, actually, there's uh, one thing I forgot to mention. If you don't want to use uh, Bookdown, and you w but you want the feature of uh, numbering figures and tables and cross-references, you can actually um, leave out this site option but you set the output format to be uh, HTML document 2 or PDF document 2 or Word document 2. So these formats are designed specifically for the feature of uh, numbering and uh, cross-referencing uh, figures and tables. So these, these output formats, formats, for example, the Word document 2 format is almost the same as the Word document format in R Markdown, but it just added the feature of uh, cross references and the numbering figures. And, uh, okay, next question is, is Tufty book format supported? And, I'm very glad that you guys are asking fantastic questions. And the answer is yes, Tufty Book is supported. And the, if you want, for example, if you want, um, let me check the function names. If you want the HTML If you want HTML output for Tufty books, you can just use um, the Tufty HTML book format. If you want PDF, I believe it's simply yeah, handout to or 
book too. Yeah, so yeah, you can use Tati. Next question is, is Bookdown a replacement of Gitbook or a competitor? Um, I'm not sure how to answer that, but uh, the only thing I can tell you is that Gitbook is one of the output formats in Bookdown, and the only uh, the, the major difference between uh, gitbook.com and Bookdown is that uh, the Markdown renderer is different. So we we use um, Pandoc to render Markdown documents, and they use I don't remember they use their own or a, a simpler uh, a simpler Markdown render. So there, I believe there are many features that are missing there. For example, they definitely don't have the feature of uh, like numbering figures or writing bibliography. So, yeah. The next question is, um, can you comment on differences between this approach and using read the DOM RMD template from RMD formats package? Um, yeah, I saw read the DOM package uh, I read it down uh, format a while ago, but I haven't tried that, and it looks very attractive to me. I mean, but I'm I'm not I I need to uh, read more about, uh, about it to tell you the exact uh, differences. Next question: Is there a complete list of YAML options documented somewhere? And the answer is yes, it's documented in the book down documentation in section number 1.4. And let me pick a, a shorter question. What is the possibility of using this in conjunction with something like IEEE journal LaTeX templates so, the, so that we can write a conference and journal articles? That's also a very good question. And the answer is that instead of using Bookdown, there's a package called Articles, also in the R Studio repository it's called Articles. And there are several examples of using R Markdown for journal articles. Pro probably I can show you a very qu quick example of using, like, uh, of writing a paper for Journal of Statistical Software. Let's uh, create a new document under documents. So this is uh, just an R Markdown document, and it's using the articles package to uh, compile this document. And now you can see you have a journal article. And the only thing you want to do is that you have to you have to write uh, a LaTeX template. And as I said, there are many examples here. So you can probably study these templates and, uh, and then use the IEEE LaTeX style. And then you can combine R Markdown with uh, these journal styles. 